Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be unboxing and building the Fantasy Village from Battle Systems Tabletop Games and Terrain. It's time for another awesome terrain unboxing and build, and this time it's the Fantasy Village. And I'll be using this for a number of different games. One will be Warcry. I really wanted some buildings to re recreate some kind of streets and that kind of thing. And so I think this is gonna work really nicely for these. I've already done the ruined monastery and used that in Warcry and that worked really well. And that video is up on the channel if you wanna check that out already. But I'll also be using it for some other games too. I think this is gonna be great for boroughs and badgers and it'll also be perfect for my own game that comes out in September, which you'll be finding a lot more about really soon. Okay, so in this video, we'll go through all the contents of the box. So I'll do an unboxing, we'll have a look at everything up close. Then I'll show you how to build one of the buildings. And then after that, I'll build the entire thing and we can lay it all out on the battlefield. I'll show you some mats you can get that are perfect for this as well. And then you can see it all built with a few miniatures dotted around just to give you a good idea of how they're gonna interact with it as some terrain for the different games. If you're already familiar with how this terrain is assembled, then I'll timestamp the video so you can jump straight ahead and see everything put together, laid out on the battlefield, and have a really good look at all the images and all the details of this awesome set. Okay, let's get started. So this is made by Battle Systems, and if you've been following my Core Space series, you'll know just how awesome their products are. And the Core Space series is a collaboration, but this particular set, the Fantasy Village, and some of the others I've bought, the Shantytown core set and the City Block core set. I bought those and I'll put some links at the end of this video where you can get a nice discount on them. And I'll also put links to Battle Systems website itself so you can see everything they do there. They also do videos on how to build everything. So it's full of tutorials and everything you need. But this set is 420 pieces. It's modular and the scale is 28 to 35 mil. You don't need to paint it because it's printed in full color on both sides of every piece. And so on the front, we're gonna get a nice image just showing us some of the parts that are included in this set. But on the back, it really breaks it down. We can see it all laid out here. It looks really great. But altogether, we're gonna get six village buildings, including the tavern, the townhouse, the storage barn, a lake house, a thatched cottage, and an outbuilding. So you're gonna get loads of buildings. We're also gonna get all these different walls, fences, rowboats, barrels, everything, even a little lake or a pond to use as well. So plenty going on in here, uh, lots of scatter terrain so we can really fill up a good sized board looking at a two foot by two foot or probably even three foot by three foot with this. So really is packed with everything we need. But now let's get it open then, have a look at the contents and get building. So I'm pretty excited about this set, really be looking forward to getting it. It's going to be great to add some different terrain to Warcry because I really enjoyed using the Monastery. And with the Monastery kit, you could pretty much build it however you wanted. But this one, it looks like more the buildings are going to be kind of set up as the ones you're going to build. So we can still do some chopping and changing, I think. But um, I'm really going to just follow the instructions that we can see on the website for this one. So we open it up, nothing inside the box on the top and then we're going to get a little envelope like this and this contains usually all the little pegs that we use to put the different parts together got this stuck down well let's get this open let's just rip it and then here we go so we're going to get all the little plastic pegs in the different ways different shapes and sizes that are going to go in there and that's going to allow us to put the different bits of card together so we get all of those and then the rest is just gonna be a big pile of awesome printed card pieces. And we can th see just how thick this is. There's a lot going on here. There's no mat included in this one. If you watch the Frontier set that I did the unboxing for, that comes with a two by two foot mat. And I'm also gonna be doing the Shantytown and City Block sets real soon. They come with a mat too. But I think with this one, you get an awful lot included and the details so good. I think it's still worth that same price to get this and then pick up a mat separately. But I'll show you two mats in a minute anyway, and then um, I'll put links and everything where you can get those as well, because the, the mats that they sell separately are gonna be perfect for this set. So I've just taken off the film and counted these cards. So you're gonna get 24 cards all together. And so let's have a look at each one, both sides, and then we'll do some building after that. So this one's gonna contain our village well and baggage cart. And you can just see how good this detail is. The print's fantastic. 
really great quality some really nice thick card as well so that's just our first one then we've got some wooden fencing so interesting to see how this is going to go together so looking forward to that again both sides or both sides and then we've got an outbuilding so it looks like this is going to be all on just one card we can build our outbuilding from that so that looks awesome even got a little hatchway which is really cool and that's going to be able to be popped out as well so you can keep it in or out barrels so we're going to build those with these bits and these barrel tops the thatch cottage and this is two of two so we know the other one's going to be there so one of two really nice and we get like an inside and outside on this too so it's really great so there's the floor and even the floor if you wanted to use it the other way up it's got two different textures so that's really nice and it represents the thickness of the wall really well it's got a chimney with a fire which i can't wait to get built so that's going to be really cool and then the other thatch cottage there so this is going to be the inside of the roof so you can see the detail they've thought about it's just so good on this even when you're inside you're not even going to see that but they've included it in there anyway uh, i think that's just brilliant so really good terrain to use for like photo photography so if you want to put your miniatures with this in the background that's going to look awesome all right now we've got lakes and bogs so it looks like on this side we've got the bogs and this side we've got the lakes so more of a pond than a lake but still awesome looking that's really great and i love how you can move this around now this is great for um the cruel boys for age of sigma if we're going to use those in Warcry as well then this is going to be really fitting in with that theme if they're taking over a village or something then they can use their magic to turn it into some kind of a swampy bog so loving that then we've got some raised walkways to go across our outbuildings and things we've got storage barn loving the tiles so I'm, I'm making terrain as well and i think this would be a great reference to make some terrain to fit in with the same scale and um but yeah making all these roof tiles takes ages so getting them printed like this is just perfect we can get gaming really quick and the good thing about this terrain is once you've built it you can either leave it built or put it away and put it back into the box and then you know it's not taking up hardly any room but i'll be keeping these buildings all built this one's the storage barn two or three storage barn one or three really nice look at that nice textures and colors so fantastic then we've got the townhouse two of one even little books and things look so fantastic really great i love this terrain it's so cool and also dungeons and dragons this would be amazing for you. you've got loads of little things and with the barrels you can even put things in there which is perfect and then we've got fantasy village furniture so that's really cool the different chairs and beds and all sorts of things going on amazing the tavern really looking forward to building this every game needs a tavern so this is going to be awesome even got a wall shield some bowls to use as scatter I and mean, they just thought of everything it's really great just makes me feel like a kid as well i get really excited when i build it and um, see it all it's really good and then we're on to the taverns there's quite a lot going on with this tavern so it's going to be quite big this is probably the biggest building i think of this set but next i'm going to buy uh, a separate um set of the blacksmith and the chapel i really want to build everything and there's a wizard's tower so yeah there's gonna be loads i'm going to add to this for sure here we've got the lake house and one of the boats another lake house with the boat part so it looks like that's a repeated bit yeah and then there's the townhouse that we saw a bit of earlier and again really good the tavern roof so that roof is on a4 you can just get a good idea of how big this is going to be and tavern again and tavern again so lots of tavern parts and the final piece is the tavern and just look at that brickwork with the ivy and everything crawling up it it's just fantastic awesome so there we go that's all of the sheets 24 in total and you can just see how great this detail is and when it's built it's going to look fantastic and um let's go away now i'll show you how to put together one of the buildings one of the smaller ones probably not the tavern and then it'll give you a good idea of how it's done but there are tutorials on the battle systems website and they show you for each thing how to build it so if you want to see each building it's going to show you how to do it on there even down to the barrels and things like that so that's the best place to go it's the people who made the game and designed it themselves showing you how to put it together so i think that's a great resource for sure and that's why there's no instructions included 
in these boxes and it also gives you a bit of freedom if you want to build your own versions and and kind of mix and match it or however you like so i'll pick out a building and see you back here in a second and then we'll put it together right here we go so i picked out the thatched cottage i thought that'd be quite fun because we get to put a whole building together we're also going to get some bits of furniture as well we can see this chimney stuck together and things like that even a barrel so that'll give you a good idea of how to put some of the furniture together as well and then here's the box i'll just focus on that it's pretty much going to be this one here that we're going to build so that's what we're going to make and then once we can do that we'll have everything we need to build all the others and again all those video tutorials are on the battlesystems.co.uk website so the first step is just to punch everything out and so you just give it a little push and then that's going to come away and you can see with these fine pieces they really come out nice and clean but if you need to on some of the smaller ones you might have to run a little craft blade along just to get these little little bits here that can get left hanging on but once it's built you don't even notice that so i don't even worry about it uh, another thing you can do is use a felt pen or a marker pen that's the same same color just to go along all these lines and then that'll just make it look even more kind of as if it's all one solid piece but again once it's built i don't even notice and i don't use the marker pen um, so yeah you don't have to but it's just something that they suggest you can do if you want to so we pop it all out and then what I do is I just lay all the pieces down together and then start assembling it. So I won't do all that on the screen. I'll pop it all out and then we'll come back and see it all laid out in a second. Right, here we go. So we've got it all laid out now. I've got all the building components that side and then these are all the little bits of furniture that are going to go inside as well. So we'll start with the building, then we'll do the furniture. Okay, so let's do the walls first. So I've got the four walls here punched out. And I've got these are all the outside so again double-sided so this will be the inside and these are great because it, it's on a hinge you could actually keep the door open or shut you can have it opening inwards or outwards it's up to you and that's a really nice feature as well so you can have it closed and then one of the miniatures has to maybe perform an action to open it and go in so that's really great and the same with the windows as well they open which is brilliant so you could even jump through a window or smash it out or whatever um, anything you like so if you get line of sight maybe if the windows open that might be a fun little addition too so these are all the outsides and then all we're going to do is take a little l-shaped clip and we're going to start with this one this will be like the front door and i'm going to push that all the way in and then i'm going to put the next one on push that one all the way in and then i'm going to follow that idea around until we get all four and then that's going to make the inside perfectly square so again pushing it all the way in there putting the back piece on and so you see this bit's overlapping but this bit's on the inside and then that'll give us a nice square finish so same again push that one all the way in on some on some of them they recommend you have this kind of at the end and then that and one at the end there but i'm going inside all the way around just following the example from the battle systems website and their tutorial really so popping that on oh so oh if it goes let's get it back so again starting on that one pushing that all the way in and then that'll go there and then that's going to give us a nice square and this should fit perfectly inside then so there we go I won't go over those clips so if we push that in from the bottom that fits perfectly so and it holds it as well and you see it's two-sided so if you wanted to have stones inside you could like cobbles otherwise we'll keep it like that and i think that looks really great you can just tighten that up a little bit so we've got all these windows that can open we've got our door and the door will even open over that bit of card so they've left plenty of room for that so really awesome okay so that's the basics of it that's the square building let's do the roof next so before we do the roof though we've just got to pop these two apexes on and so we just take this clip pop it on as far as it'll go make sure you've got the inside and the outside set up we know that's going to be the side because that's where we're going to put the stove so it's where the windows are we're going to put this apex there same on the other side again it's going to be the inside there lining up and it all matches so that goes on nicely so that's looking great and there we go so we got our building so now it's the roof that little floor just came out there so let's get the roof 
So this is really easy, just four parts. Now instead of using the plastic pegs for this, we're gonna use these little clips here, and they're just gonna simply go into this slot and this slot, and then we're gonna push it together. But before we do that, you'll notice on the apex, there's a slight curve, and so we wanna mimic that on the roof as well. And so these have got little lines just scored into them. If I would get the light to reflect off it a bit, you can see those lines. And so I'm just gonna really, really gently just bend that a little bit, do it on each side, really gently, and just make sure these jagged edges at the bottom, and then take the clip, it's a bit of a squeeze, but pop it in, you might have to push it in a little bit hard, just take your time though, same on the other side. So you can hear it squeaking a little bit, so it's a really tight fit, Push it a little bit more. And there we go, that's lined up really nice now with that clip. And I'll do the same on the other side. So I'm just keeping this in real time, just so you can see it all happening for real, so to speak. There we go, push that in there. So just be gentle with it, take your time, and then get it lined up push it in place. Maybe a little bit more it'll go, there we are. Cool, so there we go. So now we've got our roof, we can then line it up and we can see that's matched that curve really nicely. And so that's gonna sit on there and that's gonna look really great. But we're not done yet because we've gotta do this little stove and like fireplace and that's a really cool feature that comes through and, and you can see it on the outside of the building. It looks really great. So let's do that next. Right, so let's make this chimney stack now. And this is really clever. First of all, we're gonna make a square chimney by just gently bending each one of these around. And then that piece there. And then that's gonna give us a nice square chimney. What you can do, and what I do a lot, is I'll bend it over something like com that's completely flat, like a ta really flat table edge. And that gives me a nice fold. It's not always great to do it like this. Or I'll just grab a ruler. I found you could also get like a sharp ruler in there and like really push it against that. And then that's gonna give you a nice crisp fold as well. So that works really well, doing it like that. And then you can be a bit rougher and get a nice pinch to it. And that's gonna really start to hold its shape a lot nicer. So you could do the same there if you wanted to. I'm almost pinching it onto that ruler. And so that works really well. Let's try it there too. There we go. So don't worry about it holding in place though, because when we put it up to the building, that keeps it all together. So we've done that. Now we can't fold that bit there. There's no creases on that, but you'll notice there's one there. So we're just gonna bend that. And then there's no other creases. So that's all we wanna do to get that into shape. So there's our little chimney stack. And then we're gonna take our stove Bend that there. We can use that ruler again if we want to. I think that works really good. Get that there like that. And then in the video that you'll see on the Battle Systems website, they tell you to start at the bottom here and just get that lined up. And then as you push it up, you're also gonna push it in and across into this section. So it's a little bit fiddly, I'm just trying to do it here on the camera. So in there, and then, oh, you don't want to bend it like I just did. Push it up, and then push it across. Push it up a bit more, push it across. And then just work it in. And there we go. We've got a whole fireplace with stove. Oh, let's push that bit in a bit more. I think that looks awesome. Really fun, uh, really nice feature. And so now we're just going to add this to the building. So now let's take our building and where the door is, you'll see that there's an extra groove in there that looks different to all the other sides. And so that's where we wanna put our fireplace. And so as we do it like this, we're just gonna line it up and then we're gonna push it into that. So we get those there like this. And did you see that really thin line? And that thin line there, that's where we wanna go up into this part. So a little bit fiddly, but it fits for sure. 
there we go so we start it like that and then we're just going to push it again gently at first just wiggling it into place make sure it's lined up there we go that's better that's going in really nicely there and then just line it up inside too now on bits like this you could like glue that if that bothered you but for me it's fine I mean there's nothing wrong with that at all and then once it's on you can push the stove in place and it's flush against that wall then so you can add a bit more oh, don't squash it like that add a bit more pressure just to get it nice and flush so that's lined up and then at the back again just give it a little wiggle bend that in place and that's gonna stay now you could run a little bit of glue there if you wanted to as well but the building and the friction should hold it all together so you can see it's a little bit fiddly in some places but definitely follow those tutorials and if you find you're really pushing it and trying to get it in there and it's just not feeling right then you've probably got it in the wrong place there so just bear that in mind so the door still opens again that lies nice and flat but what it does is it you can push this up a little bit more so when you use this floor it fits underneath it so that's a really nice little detail that they've thought of there so that sits really nicely inside on that floor then so if we push it in like that you can see it's all nice and flat and flush and then that is level with the floor and then you just give it a little tweak line it up oh and this bit i forgot you just push it down and it slides in there we go i nearly forgot that bit so that just goes in like that and look at that how cool is that so a nice uh, stone chimney but we're not done yet once we put the roof on that little hole there that little slot just goes over the chimney and it all stays in place so there's our building but we've also got these two little pieces that we put together like a little jigsaw and then they can just sit around here around any part you want and it just adds a nice little kind of walkway around and they say in the video again that you can put your little benches there and the barrels and all the little pieces of furniture on the outside and that finishes that off and gives it loads of character so that's the building pretty straightforward i've got a few more buildings to build another five but before i do that i'll just show you how to put together some of the furniture and then i'll take loads of pictures of it all laid out and you can see it all on the battle mats as well right next we'll build a little chair so we get four components here and we take the back of the chair and the seat push that in place and then that's going to overlap a little bit and that's going to allow us to put these little seat parts on or armrests there so we're just going to push that in go right up to the line line that up neatly same here push it all the way on you can go in a little bit more and I think with these I'm probably going to glue together because I won't be flat packing this and I want them to stay in one piece and that's something you can certainly do I mean you could glue everything but just for these little pieces of furniture I'm going to glue and the rest I, I wouldn't glue like the buildings but in case I wanted to do a different build with them later on and do some different variations but there we go nice and simple you get a cool little chair and you can pop that inside or out on the uh, little wooden walkway around the house and there's loads of pieces in here the bookcase the barrels the benches the crates all things like that and there's videos on the battle systems website that show you exactly how to build those if you want to as well but i just wanted to show you a quick example of the furniture so now i'll go and build everything that came in the set all the buildings all the scattered terrain and i'll lay it out on the battle mats for you to have a really good look at it all and here we go here's everything built laid out on a mat and this mat is three foot by three foot and you can see that this terrain completely fills it up there's loads going on here lots of details the scatter is amazing and the buildings are really cool all laid around the outside edge but if you wanted to put those buildings close together you could certainly do that and have a more kind of war cry style battlefield so that wouldn't be a problem at all this took me a little bit longer than I thought it would a good three and a half hours to put everything together one of the time consuming parts was building the little barrels and all the scatter the buildings are quite quick to build but it's all this scattered terrain and some of it requires a bit of gluing like those barrels and carts and things but as you can see they really are important for the set and they really bring it to life and it just looks so cool I mean laid out like this I think it's an awesome set of terrain you've got all these details like the little rowing boats which can even be built into the game 
you got the carts which you could use as objectives you could even move them and put some rule mechanics in for whatever game you play and i love these little fences that go around and really set up these kind of homestead looking buildings you got the well in the center as well maybe someone's fell down you've got to get them out you got storage barns to hide chests in and explore and just so many details in this it's going to be great for taking photos and you know you've even got the name of the tavern the chit's head you've got to be careful how you say that one but here's some miniatures now so we can see how it looks like and i've got some untamed beasts from Warcry here just to show you how they fare up so size wise i think they look good they look like some barbarians enter in the village to destroy it take it down ruin that little pocket of civilization that's trying to be built so i think it works really well with these size uh, models no problem and you could even build a narrative around this which i think would be really fun and here's the heart eater taken over the village about to burn it down and we have to try out my favorite the corvus cabal and here's one of my favorite models i love the pose of this guy but I wanted to see how they could stand on the chimneys and the different parts of the roofs. And there is sections there, which I think we could make work with the movement rules. And I think with this height, it would be really awesome to see them sliding down the roof and attacking the enemy. I think it would be great. So I think it would even work if we can just find the points across and set up some like house rules that everyone's happy to. And here's a few oryx getting stuck in. They've captured a beast and they're just trying to tame it. We even got a crab from Underworlds making an appearance in the lake which we can actually turn over and use as a bog and then i put some cruel boys in there with that swampy bog idea in mind so these guys are pretty huge compared to this but i think if this was a human settlement it would make complete sense for these bigger beasts to come in and take it over but this terrain isn't designed for any specific game so you could literally play it with anything and i've got some of my favorite miniatures of all time from northumbrian tin soldier and look out for this set on the channel where I did an unboxing, fantastic models. But you can use these models in a game called Burrows and Badgers. And I think this terrain is just perfect for Burrows and Badgers. It's, it suits the narrative, the size is right. So, you know, it matches the miniatures and you can even see you've got a huge badger here, can easily fit through the door. Um, the base won't, but the model itself will. So you could certainly use that and tweak the rules a little bit to make it work. We got the wells. You can imagine loads of adventures going on around here. So I think for Burrows and Badgers fans, this terrain is just spot on. So we've seen the buildings and scattered terrain for the outside, but you get all this furniture included as well. And so every roof you see and the different stories of the buildings all come off so you can access inside as well. Again, perfect for burrows and badgers. Dungeons and Dragons would be fantastic here, especially this tavern. But you can see there's an awful lot of furniture going on. So you can spread this out, put it in the different buildings, set up a bar fight in the tavern. That would be awesome. And just have loads of different uh, kind of ideas and adventures for your characters to embark on. Let's just show you the roof coming off. So this is the thatched cottage. So the roof just lifts off really easy. And I put some of the furniture in there just so you can have a good idea of how it looks. I mean, it's amazing. I love it so much. The detail's fantastic. You've got the stove. The table's even got some bowls on and you've got books and everything. You can see the stove here. Really great detail. It's even connected to the chimney. And there's the table with those scatter bowls that you can either glue down or just scatter them around loosely. So you don't only just get the buildings and the outdoor scatter, you get all this awesome stuff to put inside the buildings too. So again, Burrows and Badgers and Dungeons and Dragons, perfect terrain for those games. I'll be using this for Warcry predominantly. Also my own game that comes out in September that I can't wait to share more of with you really soon. But you could also play a zombie apocalypse, I think a medieval style with the last day's rules, a little bit of tweak in there for sure. You've got Burrows and Badgers, You've got the Age of Sigma. This would work as great terrain too. Maybe even Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth. And so, yeah, loads of options here. Dungeons and Dragons, of course. So loads of games with this terrain. It would get a ton of use and I can't wait to start playing with it. If you like the look of this terrain, then definitely check out battlesystems.co.uk and I'll put a link in the description below. They do everything for, for core space, fantasy, sci-fi and apocalypse. And they've got tutorial guides showing you how to build each element of each set. So can't recommend it highly enough. I'll also put some links to Element Games and Wayland Games where you can save up to 20% on all of the products if they've got them in stock. So good to shop around and check out what works best for you with delivery costs and that kind of thing. Those links will be affiliate links to Wayland Games and Element Games, but won't cost you anything extra. In fact, you'll save up to 20% and also support the channel because I get a small commission for every sale made through those links. So thanks so much for that. It's really cool and I really appreciate it. 
I'll be doing a separate video really soon for the gaming mat that you can see in the video and also for this other muddy brown mat and these are from Battle Systems as well. And I also picked up some of these smaller sets so we can build a bridge, add another outbuilding and I bought another well. Um, I didn't realise there was one in the village set so I bought it but we can build that too. So loads more to build and then we've even got a shanty town core set and city block core set to build as well this next week or so which is going to be used in some other more futuristic sci-fi games. I'd love to hear what you think about this fantasy village by Battle Systems, so let me know in the comments section below what's your favourite part about it. Maybe you've got the set already, so join in. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope it gave you a good idea about what Battle Systems is all about and a good look at this fantasy village. I can't say enough about it. I think it's fantastic. I love the company, the people behind it are so creative and passionate about their product, and I think it's really awesome to support them and promote something that's really great and really adds to our gameplay so thanks so much for watching please like if you like it subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on tabletop skirmish games if you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel then please check out my patreon page and thanks to everyone who's joined so far it's really awesome we hang out on discord talk about the hobby share ideas and help each other out and you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description and it'll be great to see you there.